Hello, TM Grunty here, and today I have something very special for you. This is not only my first full game video with commentary, but it is also a very exciting game in the German Tier 9 Destroyer C46 that was decided on a knife's edge. Before we head into the battle, I want to show you how I set up this ship go over the consumables I use, uh, my modules and also my captain skills. For the consumables on the C46 you have no choice, you get damage control party, smoke screen, engine boost and hydroacoustic surge. I highly recommend using premium consumables to get an additional charge and also lower the duration of the cooldown on each of them. Switching to the upgrades. In slot 1 I'm using main armaments modification 1 to buff the health of the turrets and torpedo tubes and help preventing them getting incapacitated. You could also use magazine mod 1 if you don't want to use detonation flags. In the second slot I'm using aiming system modifications 1 as I have no other upgrade that is useful here. But if you are lucky and have the Hydroacoustic Search module, I recommend using that to buff the duration of your Hydro. Unfortunately, the C46 doesn't get the range upgrade in the slot 3, so I'm using Torpedo Tubes Modification 3 instead. However, in this slot you have a real choice to make. You can either take the main battery modification 3 or the Torpedo Tubes Modification 3. It basically depends on how you want to play your ship, if you want to focus more on those amazing 128mm guns or if you want to play the ship more like a torpedo boat and focus on your torpedoes. In the fourth slot I'm using Propulsion Modification 1 to prevent the engine getting knocked out because a destroyer without its engine is basically a dead destroyer. However, if you have the new upgrade speed boost modification, you could also use this to buff the duration of your speed boost to 3 minutes. In the fifth slot I'm using steering gears modification 2, as I do on all my destroyers because I value the ability to dodge incoming shells very high. Also, the base rudder shift of the German destroyers is quite high with 4.5 seconds and I like bringing that down a little bit. To be more maneuverable. And finally in the sixth slot I'm taking concealment modification 1 to bring the concealment of the C46 down to 5.9 kilometers. As far as captain skills go I'm currently using a 17 point commander and the first skill I take here is priority target. In the German destroyers the detection after firing the guns is so high that you will be shot at a lot and knowing who is shooting you and how many ships are shooting at you is crucial to stay alive in the battle. At tier 2 last stand is the obvious choice for all destroyers. You want to be able to maneuver your ship even if your engine or rudder gets knocked out and therefore having this skill is crucial. I highly recommend taking Superintendent as your first tier 3 skill. Not only do German destroyers get an additional consumables in hydroacoustic search and can make use of that, but they also suffer from a very short duration on their smoke. So it is very likely that you can use an additional charge of that during the battle. And finally your first tier 4 skill should be Concealment Expert to bring down the concealment to 5.9 kilometers which is only 100 meters more than a Benson or a Fletcher and on par with a Gearing and a Shimekaze. The next four points should then go into advanced firing training because as I mentioned earlier you don't have access to the range upgrade in slot 3 on the C46 and your base range on the guns is only 11 kilometers. You really want to be able to fire a little bit further than that. After that you have another choice to make on which additional tier 3 skill you want. My recommendation is taking basic firing training as it provides a nice buff to your DPM on the guns and helps with fighting other destroyers and also provides a little bit of additional anti-air. If you want to focus more on your torpedoes you could also take torpedo armament expertise but keep in mind it only reduces the reload of your torpedoes by about 8 seconds. 
And of course, the third viable option here is Survivability Expert, which is never a bad choice in Destroyers. It's probably the best tier 3 skill to take if you want to knife fight other destroyers, as it gives a nice percentage bonus to your hit points. Once I get this captain to 19 points, I will put the remaining 2 points into Adrenaline Rush, as it is a really great skill buffing both your guns and your torpedoes in reload, and it is also the only viable option here to take. Expert Marksman is not needed, as the guns already traverse very fast with 10 seconds for 180 degrees, and Smokescreen Expert isn't great either, because the smokes aren't good to begin with. And that's it for the setup of my German Tier 9 destroyer C-46. Let's see how this ship performs in a battle. I'm in a Tier 10 battle on the map Mountain Range, which in contrast to many other players I actually like. I'm also spawning on the preferred side with the A-cap that has a nice open area for long range torps, but it also provides little islands to the left and right where you can ambush enemy battleships and outplay their DDs. Looking at the matchmaking, the only ship that is a bit scary for me is the enemy Moskva that is in the division with a Kurfürst. But I have a cruiser division with a Sau and a Moskva spawning on my side myself. And there is also a Benson and two battleships that can provide support for me. Considering all this, I'm heading straight into the ACAP while paying attention to the minimap to see if there are any destroyers spotted somewhere else, so I can have a rough idea what to expect once I enter the cap. Some ships get spotted on the minimap, including an enemy rune, and you can see myself maneuvering into position to throw out some torps into his path. Also, the enemy Moskva gets spotted down at the B cap, which means I'm basically free to do whatever I want inside this A cap, as there is no real threat for me. There is still no enemy destroyer contesting this cap, but I'm maneuvering myself into position to leave it as soon as we get it. Unfortunately, just a few seconds before we cap out, an enemy destroyer does enter the cap, and therefore I decide to stop, smoke up and start shooting at these ships that are well inside my gun range now. Just as I activate my Hydro to prevent getting topped inside the smoke, the enemy Shimikaze gets spotted and I start shooting at him. Unfortunately my shells don't do a lot of damage to him, but at least I'm able to drive him off the cap and therefore we are finally capping A again. I'm shooting HE at this Yamato trying to set it on fire and I achieve this very quickly. I'm setting my focus on this Kurfurs now, sending some torpedoes out in his way and then try to set him on fire as I did with the Yamato. Unfortunately I'm losing the spotting on him and therefore I'm forced to reverse a little bit and try to send out torpedoes in the way of the Yamato I set on fire earlier. The Kurfus is spotted again, but I can't do anything as my smoke is about to run out and I see my torps are going to miss him as well. What I want to do now is support my ships on the two line as these two enemy ships are binding three of ours, including the two top tier cruisers. 
but as you can see I don't have an angle on them and therefore I'm forced to focus on these two battleships in the middle again. While trying to close the distance towards them, I notice that we basically have no more ships left at the B cap and that the majority of our team is camping outside the C cap, being held back by a single destroyer there. I also realized that there will be a cyclone occurring within the next two minutes and that is very bad for me. I'm now close enough to the Yamato and I'm sending out both sets of torpedoes towards him. I am now also in a position to support my team at the 2 line and therefore I turn right, set my focus on the enemy North Carolina slow down and smoke up and start shooting HE at him. The MC is already burning, but his fire goes out right now and despite showing me a good broadside I therefore continue shooting HE. I set him on fire again and switch to 80 shells and also two of my torpedoes hit the Yamato. Unfortunately for me, the NC has damage control party ready and puts the fire out again and therefore I'm switching back to HE, but both the enemy ships get unspotted here. There is nothing left to do for me inside the smoke, so I turn back towards the middle, send another set of torpedoes out to the Yamato and also a set towards the enemy Kofus that is coming over from the B-cap towards our side. At this point the cyclone is about to kick in and I have come to the conclusion that those ships on the 2-line have lived far too long and therefore I'm closing the distance trying to finally get rid of those ships. The rune gets spotted 9 km broadside to me and I immediately switch to AP shells. And there you can see the strength of the German destroyers. Those shells really hurt. I land 2.5k salvos, another 2.5k salvo and even a salvo with over 5k damage. The rune is just melting here. My aim is a little bit off here because the rune is going forward again and he barely manages to get behind this island before I'm able to finish him off, but luckily our Moscow gets the job done. I don't have an angle at the North Carolina as this island is blocking both my vision and my guns and I'm left with nothing else to do but turn back towards the B cap where the enemy Kurfürst was coming from. I start shooting at him as soon as he is in range while also trying to keep my distance as far as possible so I don't get shot back in return. Unfortunately for me he is turning away trying to run and I'm also not able to set any fires on him. I can't chase him as the cyclone is affecting vision more and more and I'm just not able to keep my distance and therefore I have to let him go. There is an enemy Bismarck closing in so I set my focus on him and start firing my guns as soon as he is in range. I also managed to get off both sets of torpedoes before the cyclone makes him disappear again. 
And this is where it gets very ugly for the German destroyers. To be able to spot something you have to be within 8 kilometers, and at that distance basically everybody can murder you with ease. To make things even worse, the enemy team still has the Moskva alive and therefore I could get spotted from 12 kilometers away without the possibility of me fighting back. The Kurfürst that just ran away is now contesting our A cap and I find myself in the awkward position between 8 kilometers of him. I am forced to smoke up and luckily set him on fire two times with my first salvo and to my surprise he didn't put the fires out. I'm activating my Hydro to be able to spot him, but he has his Hydro ready as well. To my surprise, he is only shooting at me with his secondaries and not with his main guns, and he also turns his broadside towards me, which allows me to start shooting with AP. I still have to start moving again, because sitting inside the smoke would make me a too easy target for his secondaries and possibly other ships as well. I'm trying to increase the distance between us, though that his secondaries don't hit me as often, while still shooting at his superstructure. We are finally able to take him down, but unfortunately we lose our co first in the process. At this point the enemy team is leading by 300 points, they have 2 to 1 caps and they are also up in ships. However, our Montana has done a great job so far stalling the enemy team over at the sea cap and she's also able to take down the last destroyer before finally sinking itself. To even out the points between the teams I wanted to get on the B cap, but as I approached the gap between the islands I spotted both the enemy Kurfürst and Bismarck. I launch both set of torpedoes towards the curve first and as I have no smoke ready yet I'm forced to turn away. I realized that our Bismarck is probably going to lose this fight and that I can't wait until my smoke comes off cooldown so I start opening fire on the curve first as well to help the Bismarck. I set the core first on fire and also hit with two of the torpedoes I fired earlier and both of them caused flooding. To my surprise it took him quite some time to put the fire and the floodings out and he also made no effort shooting back at me. The core first was now being shot at from three different angles with both of our cruisers, the Bismarck and me shooting at him. During all of this shooting I still have no idea why he didn't bother shooting at me or at least put his secondaries onto me. I guess I was just really really lucky here. And we finally took him down just after he went out of my detection. We are now up in ships but as you can see there is still a Bismarck approaching from the north that is shooting our sow and is very likely to take him down very soon. So I turn back towards him and hopefully take him down together with the sow before it dies. The Bismarck finally appears within my detection range and I'm launching my torpedoes to where I think he will be going and also start shooting with my guns. As you can see my aim with the guns is not that great here and I'm barely hitting any shells but luckily for me my prediction on the torpedoes was much much better and they are going to hit his broadside here. After the Bismarck sunk I can finally turn back my attention towards the B cap 
where unfortunately for us our Benson just died to the enemy Moskva. While trying to get through the smoke the Benson laid there, I noticed that I'm being raided. Knowing that the Moskva's radar will be down very soon gave me a huge advantage here. With the radar on cooldown there was nothing stopping me from getting inside the B-cap and also spotting the Moskva for my team. I'm activating my Hydro right here just in case the Moskva was already inside the smoke. I spot the Moskva and turn right to launch one set of torpedoes to where I think he will be going and then turn back in towards the cap. I'm also spotting the enemy Hindenburg here who is trying to run away to the sea cap and my cruisers open up fire on him. The Moskva finally gets within my Hydro range and I bring myself into position to fire at him. I also smoke up as I expect the Benson smoke to disappear very soon. Unfortunately I shot my guns too early and got spotted and therefore took a huge hit from the Moskva and also I completely misjudged those torpedoes. Once more you can see how good the German AP shells are. I'm hitting the Moskva for 5k and 3k per salvo, up until he angles in and then my shells start to bounce. I'm still spotting him with my Hydro and start shooting HE again, and also my cruiser that got around started firing on him too. I got a confederate medal here and we are slowly whittling him down. I'm setting him on fire once more and also fire a completely unnecessary salvo of torpedoes and down goes the Moskva. The reason I'm not starting firing here at the Hindenburg right away is because I'm trying to judge the situation. I'm trying to figure out if there is a way for us to win the battle if I just get the B cap and also if we automatically lose if I die. I come to the conclusion that our only way of winning this battle is to kill the Hindenburg and that it doesn't matter if I survive the battle or not. Therefore I am opening up fire as well, trying to take him down as quickly as possible. The Hindenburg gets set on fire and immediately uses damage control party and right as it is about to run out, the very next salvo sets him on fire again. He took down our Moskva and is now focusing on me. I'm not expecting to live there for much longer and trying to put out as many shells as possible. And right as I go down, I set a third fire on him and also get a high caliber man. I am very confident that the Sao is now able to win the battle. And right as he is about to hit his shells and sink the Hindenburg, I also get a Witherer medal. I did 209k damage, which is the highest I have ever gotten in this ship, achieved Witherer, High Caliber and Confederate medals, and also landed 370 shells and 6 torpedoes into enemy ships. I also got a solo cap and defended the base a couple of times. There are no surprises on the XP side, I score top of the team by quite a large margin, followed by the Montana that did a great job holding off the enemy team at the sea cap and then the two cruisers Moskva and Sao that helped me win the game in the end. Looking at the detailed stats you can see that most of my damage was done to the enemy battleships and a little bit to the enemy rune at Moskva. My hit rate in this game was exceptionally well especially with the AP shells and I also did a fair amount of damage with the torpedoes. I barely managed to get that Witherer medal in the end with 50k fire damage and 10k in floodings. I also had a fair amount of spotting this game, only the potential damage is a bit low but that was mainly due to the enemy ships just not shooting at me. Credit wise I only made 168k profit but I almost got 32k experience for my captain due to the camo and the flags I mounted on the ship.
And that's it for the German T9 Destroyer D46. I hope you enjoyed the video and maybe learned a thing or two about this destroyer line. Thank you everybody for watching and I hope I see you all again next time.